welcome to this week's Productivity Enhancer. Today we're going to take a look at how we can derive sketches onto a part and within an assembly. First of all, what is a derived sketch? Well, a derived sketch is basically a copy of an existing sketch that can be placed on any face or plane in an unchanged state. However, this is SolidWorks after all, and if you do want to change that sketch after it is derived onto a face or plane, you can do that. However, in its most basic form, it's just an identical copy onto a different face or plane. For example, I have this speaker bracket here with a nice little sketched logo that's been cut into the back. And you can see that it has some fillets here and it's just cut two millimeters deep. That sketch is right here. And the fillet right here has been placed after the sketch. So it's not associated with that sketch. It's associated with this cut extrude feature. So anytime we derive a sketch, it's only going to copy the entities in the sketch itself, not any fillets or any feature that you apply to that sketch afterward. So let's get started. So we have this sketch here. All we need to do is select sketch number 11, and that is this logo right here, and we want to derive it on the back side here. So all we need to do is hit control and select that face where we want the sketch derived. Next we go up to insert, and right down in our sketch tools we have derive sketch, and that sketch will be derived just like so. It can be moved in any direction, but as it is, it cannot be changed. I'll explain how to alter the sketch in a little bit, but right now let's just go ahead and dimension this guy. We'll make it how about 60 from the top. And let's go ahead and make this 30 millimeters from the edge. And there we have that derived sketch. So as I said, we cannot change any of these sketch entities as is. And if we try to, we get this message saying only dimensioning between a model entity and a sketch entity is allowed in derived sketches. So if we want to alter this in any way, we'll hit escape so we're not in smart dimension. And then we'll right click on that sketch 14 derived and hit underived. Now that sketch is able to be changed in any way, shape or form, and it's just a regular sketch. I'll just undo those two changes and then we can proceed. So now that we have our sketch where we want it, we can go ahead and make that cut extrude on this side and have it two millimeters deep. We'll make sure that it's going in the right direction. It is not. So we'll just switch directions and go ahead and accept that cut. Now, as you notice, we don't have any of the fillets that were associated with this sketch on the, the other side. So if we want to add those fillets, we're just going to have to do it the regular old fashioned way. Go ahead and select all of these edges and click OK. And there, now we have that logo nice and filleted, and it was very simple to get that sketch derived on the other side. So since we underived sketch 14, we can now go ahead and derive sketch 14 if we'd like. However, if we did leave this sketch 14 derived, we wouldn't be able to copy it. So let's go ahead and select that sketch, select this face, go ahead and derive that sketch place it anywhere, it doesn't really matter right now, just want to go ahead and get it down. So now you can see sketch 16 is derived. So I'm going to need to exit this sketch because once the sketch is derived it automatically puts you in sketch mode. So we'll exit out of that. Now if we want to derive sketch 16 right on the same face, let's go ahead and select it, control and select that face. Now when we go up to insert and derive sketch, we get this warning message saying you cannot create a derived sketch of an already derived sketch. The reason for that being that derived sketches are still going to be attached to the sketch from which they are derived. So if I were to make any alterations to sketch 14, which was the original here, sketch 16 would automatically update. So let's go ahead and see that in real time. I'm going to go ahead and make a slight alteration to sketch 14. Let's go ahead and just move this out, it doesn't matter, just for example purposes. Then when I click OK and exit the sketch, then you'll see sketch 16 is also updated automatically. So that's the simple reason why you cannot derive a derived sketch because you'd have too many things lining up on top of one another. So SolidWorks makes it nice and simple for you. We're not going to keep this change so I'll just hit Control Z and there we're back. But sketch 11 and sketch 14 since those are underived these can be derived on any number of faces and planes infinitely and any instance of that derived sketch will then be updated if you make any changes to the original. Okay, so that's derived sketches within one single part. Let's go ahead and take a look how we can derive sketches within an assembly. So here I have that same speaker bracket with a speaker box attached to it in an assembly. 
here we have the logo which is right here in the speaker bracket sketch 11 there it is so our two parts of the speaker assembly are the speaker bracket and then we have the speaker box here what if we want this logo derived on the speaker box which is a separate part in this assembly well it's just as easy as deriving a sketch in a part only there's one more step we're gonna have to go ahead and edit this part and then we can grab sketch 11 and let's go ahead and put it on the inside of the speaker box so we'll hit control go up to insert derive sketch and there we have our sketch ready to be cut out just like it was before so from here we can go ahead and extrude cut we'll make that down two millimeters make sure it's going the right direction and it will cut right into the back of that speaker box and we can add fillets to make it look pretty just like we did before this part of the process is basically identical to deriving a sketch in a part so once again if we go ahead and make any changes to that original part the changes will show up on all sketches derived from that original sketch let's just make a crazy change here let's say this dimension needs to be 60 click OK and we rebuild it that'll show up in the assembly as 60 so that's the derived sketch in SolidWorks 2013 it's a really nice tool if you need to make an identical copy of a pretty complex sketch and you don't want to have to draw it out by hand again as long as you have a planner surface or plane you can derive that sketch wherever you'd like so thanks for watching this week's productivity enhancer until next time